Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about data storage and specifically we're going to talk about something called a product called MongoDB and the DB there for some of you might know it means database and so Mongo this company produces a database called MongoDB. Now before we get into what MongoDB is just for the people who have never seen or had to deal with databases and storing information or persistent data to disk, we're going to kind of quickly cover what a database is, the two broad categories of databases, and all this information could just be several courses in college, but we're going to cover it sort of all very quickly in a few minutes just to kind of give you some idea. The very first thing we want to get squared away and understand is what is a database. So broadly speaking, um, and this is a definition from Wiki, uh, PDA, but just like it says here, a database is an organized collection of data. It is the collection of schemas, tables, query reports, views, and other objects. The data are typically organized to model aspects of reality in a way that support process requirements requiring information, such as modeling the availability of room in a hotel in a way that supports finding a hotel with vacancies. So that aside, just think, I have some data, and in our case, we've been doing this to-do application, and the data there represents users, it represents um, the tasks that they need to have completed, and so we need to store that information. So far, we've been storing it in memory, and every time we restart our application, we see it go away. We also store it in a file, but we had to, you know, just store it in a JSON file, and then we can read back the JSON file. But that is not quite ideal. There's a number of shortcut shortcomings with just storing it in a file. For example, if we had multiple, if we start scaling up our application, had multiple using the users using the um, the application and storing it a file, we'll have you know the file being written to and read at different times, and it's not as easy. If you can imagine that, even if we had one user who had 20 tasks and they put them, uh, we stored it a file and then they deleted. A task in the middle of that list of 20 and now we have to go back to the file and rewrite a new file just because it's harder to just go delete some data from the middle of a file but databases are optimized for inserting data and finding it and retrieving it and so on and so without making your database expert like I said earlier um, just talking about databases and the basics of database and how to use them are several courses in of themselves so all you want to be able to understand right now for this slide is that a database is just some place that you store a collection of information. And don't worry about the tables and schemas and all that stuff. We'll get to that. Right now, just think database, place to store information. Now, a database management system is a special piece of computer software that, you know, gives you this capability of storing information. So a database doesn't have to be a computer system. A database, you can say I have a database, and all you really mean is I have sheets of paper that allow me to organize stuff in a certain way in a file cabinet. But when we talk about database management system, we tend to talk about a computer system. And there's some examples of database management systems. And again, I got this um, information directly from um, Wikipedia. So if you go there and you read this, and then you come and you read this, I didn't um, plagiarize it. I simply copied it verbatim and just highlighted something. And so down at the bottom you see um, some examples of database management systems and we're going to be talking about one in particular much later on. Now we know what a database management system is, a piece of software that implements a database. There are SQL databases and non-SQL databases. Those are the two broad categories I mentioned. So what is SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language and it's just a standard language that is used for, by database system um, to allow you to define the logical structure of the data in the database, how it should be organized, and how to get store information, you know, add data um, to the database and retrieve information. So find what you're looking for. Um, so for example, when we talk about hotel rooms or even in our example, we talk about tasks that need to be performed or users, how do we say what a user is, what are the expected values for a user, what is valid values for a user, and for a task, what are the valid values? And what's required, what's not required? And a RDBMS, which is just a relational database management system, is simply a database management system that allows you to, ex um, to describe relationship between data. 
um, your, your data. So here's an example. So let's say I had users and um, or people I wanted to keep track of. And so I have something, let's call this a table, but if you, have, you don't know what a table is, this just look like a spreadsheet, um, a table in a spreadsheet, but we're gonna use the same terminology in the database. We well, say we have this place where we can uh, put on information about users. And so I have these fields called ID, first name, last name, age, and social security number. And under them, I have information for different users. You have three users here. Then I have another table, and it looks like it contains the addresses for these individuals. And so for record one in the address table, you can see is about person two, which is Mary Smith. And record two is also about Mary Smith. So this allows me in the second table to have multiple addresses for the same person. And the key thing there is to know that there's a field in the address table that references the ID that I used to identify a person in the person table. And so there's where that relationship comes in. Because if I put an address and I don't have an ID tying it back to a person, well, whose address is this? Now, having that address in a separate table allow me to re record multiple addresses for any one person. And I could even put things like the type of address that I'm talking about, whether their home address. And, and you can imagine doing the same thing for contact, out of contact information, like a cell phone or a website or whatever. So that's an example of when you have multiple pieces of data and it needs to have a relationship be, between them, how uh, RDBMS will allow you to do it. And so SQL RDBMS is simply a database that uses the structured query language to express these relationships, store the data, and retrieve it. What we need to remember is this at all. This is just an example. So what does SQL look like? So this is a piece of SQL, and on line one, I'm using SQL to create a table called business, and then in my um, database um, business, that's the name of the database, I could put multiple tables, and one of the tables I'm creating is person, and, and you can see in defining the person um, table, line between the line four and nine, but especially four through eight, those are the fields. Those are the pieces of data that I want to keep track of for one person. So each person is going to have an ID. Each person's first name will be tracked, and it's not null. Each person's last name. The age is an integer. So security number is some 11 characters. And then there's that primary key. The bottom line is that there's this well-defined structure of what a person looks like and or the information I want to keep track of for a person. And then you see I have an example of how you insert some data about some individuals into this table. That's the SQL language, and a number of databases use that language so that if you know SQL, you can go from database to database and you don't have to worry about the doing basic things in that database. Of course, there might be some incompatibilities also. Just to round out what we've learned so far, in relational database management systems, or at least a database management system, you tend to have this idea of a database and a database, one database contains any number of one or more, or even zero or more tables, and tables have fields or cells. And the fields or cells are organized into columns and rows. So a column is something that's vertical, so like column zero there, column one. So if somebody said, give me all the cells in column zero, it would be cell zero and cell four. All the cells in column two would be cell two and cell six. And then you have rows. So row zero um, is horizontal. So all the cells in row zero is cell zero through cell three. And then now if you look at that, how that maps back to um, logically how we had information organized in the database, you'll see from that sample table that we used before. Pretty much all we wanna, I wanna say about SQL. Now we're gonna talk about no SQL database management system. Now it's important to note with um, no SQL database management system. First of all, they don't use SQL, so or structured data, right? Query and language. So they don't use that language and they really don't have any structure. So that's where the no SQL come from. Since they don't have any structure, they tend not to have any relationship either between the data. And the advantage of these databases are that it's easier to use and to get started with. And because you don't have to sit down and sort of plan out how you're gonna put data in, what are field types and how long it should be, as you know in my previous example with SQL, I had to say that social security number is just 11 characters. Or for name, first name and last name, I'm gonna allow up to 100 characters. But when somebody had um, more characters than that, 
not likely, but still, I have to give enough. What if I chosen like 20 and then somebody had like a really long first name? You see, so things like that you get away from. Okay, you don't have to think about it when you come to a um, NoSQL type database. Other thing I had to do is say integer is a number. You're going to see, I'm going to use to store integer strings and everything in a NoSQL database and I don't have to define it. And so NoSQL databases tend to either um, store either JSON documents or be of key value type pairs. So again, key value is very straightforward. It's just giving something a name and then attach associated with a value. And you could put anything in, right? Um, those are tend to use for caching, the key value ones. But, um, and then the um, something like MongoDB, which is the one we're gonna be using, um, really operates on a document level using JSON as a document um, entity. Um, the way you wanna think about it is uh, if you put a relational database side by side with a NoSQL site database, um, like in MongoDB, for example, the terminology they use to correspond to a database is they call, they call it a database. And then, like we have in relational database tables, they call that a collection. And then each row in a table on the relationship side, which would represent like a, a person information or their address, that would be a JSON document. So we'll get to play with it in the next um, session and make some sense there. I know it's probably a lot for if you're new, so I don't really want to spend too much time on these concepts or these ideas and confuse you. Like I said, we're going to be using MongoDB and the reason why we're going to use it is because it's usually, it's very easy to get started with and many developers use it for new applications. They still use structures, databases like MySQL and so on, but it was a little bit harder for us to get started with, so we're going to use Mongo. Um, I got this started from Mongo's website. Um, there's a link to the website and the next slide is going to basically tell you to install Mongo and to do that you go to the Mongo website, you download it and you follow the instruction depending on your platform if you're on Windows, Linux or whatever and you can verify the installation. Assuming you follow the instructions to install MongoDB on your platform, what I'm going to do is show you how we can kind of play with it a little bit, sort of verify our installation. And so I sped up this video, but you can slow it down and just follow the procedure. And basically, I'm going to go to a section of the Mongo doc documentation and just execute a few, co few commands by starting up the database as one, then starting up a client shell to connect to that database and just type a few commands. Okay, so you have Mongo up and running. So I have two terminals here and I'm going to start it. Now, notice when I type MongoD for daemon, um, it's telling me I can't find the di directory. It's looking for a specific directory. Now, I can make that directory and just restart the command and then we'll find the directory and initialize it. But what I'm going to do is um, create a data directory in my current directory, which is the this chapter 8 directory for MongoDB. And then I'm going to use the minus DB path um, option and point it to this directory. And now, notice when I start up, it doesn't complain about not finding that directory. And then now I can start the Mongo shell um, by just typing Mongo. And notice how it connects to my running Mongo um, server in the back. And you could see that here from the command. It says it's connected. I have one connection open, and then it tells me that I'm connected to the database test. Now it's also saying documentation. If you type DB and enter, it will show you currently connected um, database, and we see that there. So let's play with our um, MongoDB installation here. And we look at the documentation and say if you type DB, that the name of the collection and then you could insert something. So if we do get collection name, we see we don't have any collection, but let's just type db that person or collection here, in this case, this person says like our table. We're gonna insert a document, x.1, it's just a JSON object, and then we're gonna notice when we do collection name again, person shows up and we insert a second document. And you can see how easy and simple this is and um, we didn't have to define any structure for it, it was just JSON objects. So in wrapping up, Thanks for your time. Um, see you in the next video. I hope you've learned something. Again, subscribe or spread the word. What you're going to see me do while I wrap up here is I quit my console, stop the MongoDB server, started back with the same data directory. And when I reconnected and look for my data, you can see it's always still there. I added some more data. Um, in the example, uh, was the collection I was playing with, the person collection. Um, but that's all you're going to see. Um, in our next section, um, which is next video, 
we're gonna go through playing a little bit more with our collection to just get a little feel um, of it we're not really going to be using mongodb from the command line per se very much i'm just going to use it to peek at our data but basically we're going to be using mongo from our application and so that's why we're not going to spend too much time actually playing with mongo from the command line again thanks for your time and take care see you in the next video